So from um, Ephesians 2 verse 4, um, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It was by grace that you've been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Jesus Christ, in order that the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from your source, it is from the gift of God. So what we need to think about is that, um, that Jesus died on the cross. He knew what he was doing. He was doing it for us, for our salvation. Um, and he, was, he also said in Ephesians 2, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far, far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So for us as Christians, it's the blood of Christ that brings us close to him. And it's by faith that we um, come into, the, into communion with God and with that faith. So also Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assured about what we do not see. So what we do not see, if you put, you put Jesus died on the cross, basically it was our faith that accepted him because of his resurrection, because of his um, dying on the cross for us, he set us free from all our sins. So now that we live in him and it is through faith in him that, that um, we are saved. So we're saved through him. So um, the body of Christ represents that, um, which I forgot to get a cup. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, um, for I received from the Lord what also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So we're part of the new covenant, and it's by faith that we walk into that new covenant, and it's um, by sharing communion together and remembering Christ, then we're walking and living in his, in his love and in his faith. Mm-hmm. So... As we think about this, think about how, how as we take the communion, just think about God's um, love for us and our faith and what our faith, what our faith in him has given us in Christ. Um, yeah. Amen. Amen. I had been like in a spiritual quandary for a long time because a couple of years ago um, I had a uh, a TIA, which is a small stroke. But it was small 
but you would tell your arm to do something and your arm would not obey. So you'd sort of think you were going to be opening the door and your arm hadn't moved, right? Now, you would think that everyone would be kind to you in the midst of your travail, but that wasn't my experience, to be honest. I think um, a lot of people did not allow me any space for my own personal weakness or suffering. And in fact, um, some people slightly rejoiced in it. And um, that's just the way it is. It's the, it's the nature of human beings. But let me tell you this. We live in an age where we can't afford to be powerless against what's coming against us. And no matter what brand of church you go to or whatever, you need to be among warriors. You need to be among people who know how to fight to the death. Because that'll be what we have to do on behalf of our children. This morning... Um, I listened to a program called Outsiders, which is a program I listen to regularly. It's Sunday morning at nine. And, um, and they're talking about wokeism and what we're prepared to accept of people, you know. Someone asked the Prime Minister what a woman was. And he said, a female human being, right? And people rejoiced in his answer and I thought to myself well what else would you say they were like if you were taking that you didn't accept that position what else would you say and I see that uh, beloved we're on a course that is going to bring the world to a very very dark place and the book of revelations is meant to be a book of revelations, not a book of hiddenness. We don't say turn to the book of hiddenness, chapter 1. And the book of revelations in, in many ways is easy to understand because it's all about shapes and symbols. And if you were to read um, uh, Kenneth Connor's book and have it in your library, Shapes and Symbols of the Bible, you'd have some understanding. And when you understand that a lampstand means the church. When you see lampstand, you know what you're reading about. Which is a long way of saying we're in a place where what we did yesterday will not work. It's not working. And you can walk around pretending it is working, but it's not working. And I've known the heady world of having people hanging out the doors here. Okay? And, uh, and I've known the heady word of people now who don't go to church because they see no need, they see no benefit, they see no responsibility. And, um, and they'll, they'll make statements like the church is just after your money. Well, I'd like to see people if they went into work and their employer decide not to pay them, how long they'd keep turning up. And... and God has provided for us, right? And it just took three years of going to Tamworth every couple of weeks, right? That's how he provided for us because he, he knew, right? Okay. And, and I make this statement because we, in 2 Kings chapter 6, Elijah is living with a company of prophets. Now, I believe at times in our history we have been a company of prophets. And, um, and he's living with a company of prophets and they want, to live, they want to live with him. And he said, we'll go down to the river and uh, cut some timber and we'll build dwellings. Now, when they go down to the river, they find, one bloke finds, his axe head has disappeared into the water. Now, a lot of times we're chopping with no axe head. We don't realise the anointing has left us. And um, I, we had uh, afternoon tea with David and Lindy yesterday. We solved almost all of the world's problems in our conversation. 
it went right around and we were able to we were able to pronounce judgment on a lot of people and on a lot of situations. <laughs> but um, the reality is, when I was saved, I asked God, do you do anything? Or do you just sit up in heaven contemplating yourself? What do you do? If I've got a little child in my home who has pneumonia, Will God help me? Will God help that little child? Or am I at the same mercy of everyone who's looking for erythromycin to fix the baby and not, and not the hand of God? And I'm not saying to God, thank God for erythromycin. I'm a, I, I, I think if you, if you need it, take it. But I'm just saying, saying we have lost the ability to connect supernaturally and the, uh, I've been meditating now for several weeks that the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit will lead us into things to come. Will show us things to come. And um, I'm there. See, we, we think the world's all okay. Well, did you see the 95-year-old woman yesterday who was tasered by the police <laughs> because she was in a had dementia. She's in a nursing home, the poor darling, 95, mother of eight children, right? And the police said she walked the police said she walked towards us threateningly with a steak knife on her walker. <laughs> on the frame. <laughs> and so they tasered her and fractured her skull. And the poor Dala might have already gone to heaven because they didn't expect it to last long. And I, I thought to myself, what sort of society would give the police that sort of power over them? And, and so, so we have, we, 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 we've gone crazy. See, and the thing is, when you're crazy, you often don't admit it. You don't admit it. And so I, I, I ask God, um, I ask God what he wants of me and I can tell, him, tell you what he wants of me and then maybe he wants the same thing from you. You see, the devil wants to obstruct us, to block and to thwart and to restrict whatever we do. Now, my son Aaron is arriving in two weeks and there are some members of my family that if they have a birthday, they celebrate seemingly forever. And he's in his birthday phase. So we thought, well, what can we get him? You know, what can you get a man who's got everything anyway? So we're taking him to a day of axe throwing. Now, you can see how it is all fitting together, Rob. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So axe throwing. So you go and buy, um, and we can take... Tanya's going to go, okay, and um, my children will go and some of his friends will go, I suppose, and you pay $55 and you can throw the axe at these targets and you get a top score and there's lanes like bowling lanes except at the end of them it's just wood where you throw your axe into the target. And it reminded me of this guy, this prophetic trainee in, in the book of Kings, he would have been moving his axe handle and nothing would be happening because he had no axe head. And often we do a lot of religious, hyper-religious activity for no results because we're doing it in our own strength. I was in a place with my darling, my, my wife has been everywhere with me, you know, really such a woman. She even went to Anaconda with me and 
got me organised. <laughs> but, but suffice to say, we went to a very big uh, Catholic meeting at Ride and I had the Spirit of God all over me and as I walked down, as I walked past people, they fell over. Like lots of people. Lots and lots and lots. Now, you can be safe tonight because I don't think my axe said for you falling over. I don't think it's on the handle. But I've seen God do remarkable things. And we talk about tonight when Julie's sharing about communion, about faith. Faith is not believing what God's going to do necessarily. It believes what he, in what he's already done. So it's from a basis of receiving what he's already done, what he's already promised. It's not all about what he's going to do in the sweet by and by. It's about what he's done for us in the here and now. And, um, and the devil wants to obscure that picture of God. I got my... I met a guy who I used to work with in Grace Brothers years ago and he said, would you like to come fishing? And I love fishing even though I don't go. I have the potential to go because I used to collect fishing lures and I have them all at home in the big box and if I had a swimming pool in my yard as I have had sometimes, I'll test my lures out to see the action of the lure in the swimming pool. Because there are certain sort of fish that are attracted to certain sort of action in the lure. That's why you get them. There's brim lures, back bass lures, trout lures, uh, deep diving lures, uh, ones that skip up on, uh, on the surface. And I've got a big box for them. I'll have hundreds, I think. Um, I just decided then to go on an eBay. I've just decided today. But so I go fishing with this guy. We go at, um, it's dark when we go in the morning and we carry his canoe. Remember, I'm night blind, right? And I'm with this guy and we've got to put his canoe in that Menangle Bridge. So you've got to walk down to the riverside and then I got in the back of the canoe. So uh, I quite like canoeing and I'm, I'm reasonable at it, you know. And so we're, we're going up the Menangle River he casts, his, he casts his rod and he catches a bass, the first cast. My heart's desire has been to catch a bass. I liked them. I've never, I had never seen a live bass or a dead one. So I have my first cast and my reel breaks. You're starting to laugh, Dave, see? See? Already. And as the reel breaks, I try and fix it and it dropped my rod over the side and it sinks to the bottom. And uh, there's only one way to get it. So I get all my gear off to my undies and then I dive down and I get the rod. Now, I can't even see it. You can't see underneath the water in the dark. You've got to be feeling around for it. You don't know what you're going to grab hold of. So I grab hold of the rod, I get it up on the side and spend the rest of the day watching my mate fishing because I didn't have the equipment. I didn't have the tools. Now... That broken rod and reel is still at home. That can go in the garbage, I think. It's a bad memory. The point is, without the tools, you can't do the job. Now, I knew more about fishing than this bloke, but he was the one with the fish. And we ended up pulling up by the side of the creek and cooking a fish, but one little bass like this is not going to feed two blokes, so we had to throw a few sausages in as well. A word of caution, fish and sausages don't really go together. They're not complementary in their taste. So you can be there and uh, not long after this, 
I promoted the world's richest wood chopping tournament that ever held in Australia and still probably would be the richest. We flew people in from all Australian states and New Zealand and converted Miranda Fair Shopping Centre to be a wood chopping arena. And uh, I watched guys who could use an axe because I was sitting from here to there. There were wire net there was netting all around the place so big wood chips didn't hit people. But the first prize for chopping through this under, uh, underhand where you stand on top of the log was $1,500 cash, which was good money, good money now too. And it showed me that a guy in the Book of Kings trying to cut down trees with no axe head is going to struggle because he doesn't have the equipment. And the devil wants to keep you from equipment. He wants to keep you from the truth of it. It says in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 7, that Jesus emptied himself. What does that mean? He emptied himself. Therefore, if he is empty, what you say can't touch the emptiness inside. That emptiness inside can only be touched by the Spirit of God. See, he came as an empty man with no reputation to lose. So if he was sitting in the canoe with me and he'd lost his rod, he couldn't care less. He's not going to be upset. He's not going to feel foolish. He's not going to be embarrassed to tell people he caught no fish. Of course, when he was in a fishing situation, he said to Peter, put your net on the other side. Do something different to what you've done. And Peter said, Lord, we fished all night, but nevertheless, I'll do what you said. Nevertheless. See, the prophetic is caught, uh, not taught. See, I, I'm there now, and I'm, I say this, I want to say this with humility. I'm moving in levels of the prophetic that I've never moved in because I've never really, because I haven't sought God how I'm seeking him now. And, and uh, because I know the world is changing and I know that as a Christian leader, I have to keep my finger on the pulse of what God's doing. And I see a lot of people doing a lot of stuff, but I don't think they've got hold of it. I don't think they've really got hold of it. The Spirit of God starts to break out in Ashbury in America. All of a sudden everyone got frightened and shut it down. They put so many restrictions on it because why? The Spirit of God's like wildfire. And they can't control what the Spirit of God does. Tanya Raya is sitting in the third or fourth row in the Toronto airport vineyard and a woman next to me leapt in the air, spun in the air and landed again next to me. You couldn't do it. If you're a Russian gymnast, you couldn't do it. And we saw people healed and delivered and set free. So they go and, they go and get uh, Elijah and they bring him back and he says, where did it fall? Where did we lose this accent? Where have we lost this anointing? Why aren't the trees falling down? See, these can fall in the spirit of compromise where we start to fear man. We're in a, we're in a society that fears man. All, how many here drive a car? How many of you see people blatantly break the law every day, endangering themselves and endangering people around them? Tanya and I uh, were out the other day going to see my daughter and a guy on a motorbike rode up on the inside of us. What? Crazy, yeah. Rode right up the side of us. Okay? And then they'll bip you and abuse you because they've nearly killed themselves 
and you've nearly been the instrument of their death. How many people? How many people do you see run, run red lights? How many people do you see turn against the lights? How do you see people, how many times do we see people disobey school zones and all of these things? But of course, we're a society of lawbreakers and self-seeking people who are concerned, how do I get from here to there in the quickest possible time and blow the rest of you? In this muddy river, and the rivers in the Middle East that I saw were pretty muddy. The Jordan was pretty muddy too. And uh, um, you had to pray of yourself when you got baptised in it, really. <laughs> so he showed him the place. So he comes up with, with a stick And this stick represents the cross and redemption. And he hits the water and the axe head floats to the top. See, power has left the church and God's telling us how to get it back. And I don't care who hears this message, power has left the church. You know, we can never be happy when we see, when we see uh, the failure of marriage, the, the, the uh, mental, mental anguish that many people go through in their life, the sickness, the wayward children, the, the, all of this. See, when I had a lot to do with wood choppers, they would bring their axe in 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 metal cases and they'd have them locked they'd open them, they'd get the axe out they'd give them another they'd give it the the blade another touch up, they could shave with the blades of the axes see the Jordan River stood between God's people and the promises of God. The promised land was over the Jordan. And if you dropped your axe in the Jordan, it wasn't going anywhere. It'd be sinking to the bottom. God often wants us to advance in our life at the most inappropriate time. This is an inappropriate time for me. I'm sitting on me walker, right? I don't ask myself how I feel because I don't give myself the right to feel anything else but ready. You see, it's inappropriate. People are against us. And I'm not paranoid about that. You've only got to listen to the rhetoric. You've only got to have a look at the anti antichrist teaching in the world. You know, when I first became born again, I became very conscious of the work of the supernatural because supernatural things happen to me all the time, good and bad. But what I have seen, you go into a shop, tarot cards, Ouija boards, all for sale. Implements of witchcraft, of the dark arts. Look at the movies that are on. Look at the language in the movies that are on. David's city and his people at Ziklag were overtaken and he inquired of God, what should I do about this? Of course, the men wanted to kill him because all the women were taken, the kids. And God told him these three words that he'd speak down through history to us. And if we were standing by the bank of the Jordan River, he'd say, like he said to David, pursue, overtake and recover. God wants us to recover. 
Again, the scripture says in Proverbs, if you catch a thief, you can command him to repay you back sevenfold. Let's not just walk around swinging an axe handle and wondering why the trees aren't falling down. You know, Tanya and I get married with kids, right, okay? I don't really know how to use tools. I wasn't that way inclined. I knew how to go to parties. I didn't really know how to do tools. But I tell you what, if you've ever tried to chop a tree down with a blunt axe, (coughs) someone gave us 25 railway sleepers which we have to, had to collect. Now, I don't know if you've ever lifted a railway sleeper, but I lifted those railway sleepers by myself many, many times because every time we moved our house, we'd take our railway sleepers with us. So one thing I did one day, I had to chop one in half, Dave, with an axe, an iron, iron bark railway sleeper. Boing! And uh, we're told, we're told in one king, so that he'll make us a sharp threshing instrument. A sad verse in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20, it says, The summer is gone, the harvest has ended, and we have not been saved. Much of the book of Revelation revolves, revolves around, particularly the early parts of it, revolve around, revolve around the prophecies of Jeremiah and, uh, and the 70 weeks and things like that. The Holy Spirit dwells inside us to equip us for any task that he gives us. The spies are sent into the promised land, they come back and say all, all these big people live there and all this and all that. And the very flag of Israel is two men with a, uh, a, uh, a stick carrying a bunch of grapes which is dragging the ground that's so heavy. And when Caleb came back to give his report, he's in his 80s or 90s, he says, I'm well able to take the land. I'm well able. Well, I think of Caleb when I hear me joints cracking in the morning. He said, I'm well able because he's looking at God and what God has promised him can't be a lie. In Hebrews 10.35, it says, don't fling away this lively hope. Don't fling it away. Don't lose the accent. We're promised milk and honey in the wilderness. We're, the world is undergoing a great test now and a great cleansing. Because God doesn't want you in the front lines with people who won't fight. For people who will give up. For people who will compromise. God is not preparing an army of compromise. where they're not going back like the four lepers in Kings, where they get to, they said, well, they're going to kill us anyway. So we went to the gate. And they said, we're not going back. And when they went there, they found the Assyrians had run away. I don't want to make anyone feel bad. I don't want anyone to feel guilty. I don't want anyone to come under guilt, shame or condemnation because I believe that's a weapon the church has used on purpose for centuries. And so what they do, they, they, you can have a, a, a message preached about salvation over and over and over again and have a weekly altar call and get everyone to come up and respond, right? 
And can I tell you something? You don't have to do that. Once you've responded, you're saved. It's a permanent, life-changing event in your spirit. So my spirit has been saved. My spirit has been born again. Therefore, I am a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. And that word new creature means a brand new species. It doesn't just mean that God has got us and tarted us up and uh, given me a new jacket. He's given me a new me. And see, what happens is churches that get in this band where they're worried about who's coming to the Lord, I've had five first decisions, 19 recommitments and all this. Beloved, that's, that's insanity. Every time you commit a sin, you don't have to say you're sorry and you're not out of fellowship with God. There's an acknowledgement of your needing of God. There's an acknowledgement that he had saved you. If people say, are you saved? I, I had a minister come to my door and say, you can't be saved because you're once a Catholic. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, don't worry. He came and told me he couldn't be saved. Well, let me tell you. I was full of the Holy Ghost and fire, a tongue-talking believer, and he's telling me I don't know God. Well, see, I know God, see, because I met him on the floor of a mental hospital. I know God. I'm not at the mercy of someone with an argument. I know him. And, 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 and because of that, I know that we now, the devil gets us in this, in this double-mindedness where we don't ask for what we believe in because we don't know if we believe it. And in many, many places, including this place, there's not a lot of evidence of the healing power of Jesus Christ. It's not. And, and the reality is that we've ceased to believe that God's, God means what he tells us. Now, I'm, I just would like to, with her permission, just... Um, Pray with Linda about her hip. Okay? So if you come up here and Tanya might join me if you would love. You can walk up here, can't you? Okay. Dave might come with you. I see, saw... Um, Rachel and Rob, in, in their quest to have children, go through a very painful journey. But I see those little kids run in and I say, God, you're marvellous. You're wonderful. You're just beyond, beyond compare. So I just want to encourage you, go and look for your axe head and put it back on the axe handle and start to swing it. You see... We're faced with a, with, a, with a big question. If we believe this stuff, there's certain action we should be taking. I don't think that that's unreasonable. There's certain action we should be taking. Like, for example, I don't listen to Christian teaching on YouTube except people like Andrew Womack, who I really think is solid, as solid as a rock, Derek Prince, Mike Bickle, people like that. Because in this time, there's so many people who have been so affected by events in the world that they've lost their peace and harmony in God. They don't have that peace and harmony. And I, I make no judgments on anybody because there are times that I, that I haven't known what to do. And I've had people say to me, what are you going to do? But um, I do very little else other than seek God now about what he wants me to do. Because I am a prophet for the end times. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that as in any way smart or anything like that. But I know what I've known about people and what I've prophesied accurately over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And so I know I hear the voice of God. But this week, 
I enrolled in an online course by Matt Sorger, who I really respect, on hearing the voice of God and on heavenly mantles because I believe that I need to really be checking myself and my theology against sound teaching all the time. And see, many people that you meet, they don't believe or practice supernatural ministry. Or if they do, they've allowed it to become, they've allowed it to become polluted with uh, events of the world. And it's not easy. It's not easy to know. But what what happens is, I speak Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. Now I don't say that because I'm looking for a medal, but I have a classical education, and I'm now beginning Latin again, because now I'm not in high school. I can learn Latin from the position of an adult, and it really ties a lot of historical events together. So I want to encourage you to really, you know, we pray for sick people all the time. We see people healed. To get on our prayer list at the Father's house means you have a good test chance of being healed. We see people healed there all the time. No charge, no responsibility, but we pray for people and see them healed because we care about that. We care about the supernatural nature of God. I don't want to join the Rotary Club. I've got nothing against the Rotary, by the way, for any Rotarian, so I've got nothing against it. But I don't want to join the Rotary Club. You know, I, I, I've seen many people healed by joining Toastmasters, healed in their self-image, their ability to be able to pr- present things. And I, I recommend Toastmasters to people. But I certainly, certainly, certainly do not want to see you settle for less when God's got more for you. I'm at Linda's house yesterday and she's really, it's a struggle for her to get round. I was taking bets on her when she sat in the chair there. She was like, because she's in pain. And when you see your friends in pain, you know. So I pray for you and I pray for myself. I pray that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance. I pray whatever you need to repent of, you do it quickly and get it over and done with. And you wouldn't let the devil keep belting you up for years. I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will be upon you. Amen.